There is an exponential growth in the uh, development of metal organic frameworks for use in a variety of uh, separation applications. In uh, several papers published in the uh, literature describing the uh, development of novel MOFs, breakthrough experiments are usually conducted in uh, an apparatus as uh, shown um, in this uh, diagram here. Typically, the laboratory experiments are conducted in breakthrough tubes under isothermal conditions, and the tubes are packed with morph crystals of about 5 micrometers to 10 micrometers maybe in um, crystal size. The inside diameter of the tube is of the order of 5 millimeters. The length of the pack tube is about 100 millimeters. The um, volumetric flow rate of the gas mixture entering the uh, breakthrough tube is of the order of 2 milliliters per minute, resulting in a uh, superficial velocity of the gas mixture within the uh, breakthrough tube of 5 millimeters per second. In contrast, industrial PSA units are operated under adiabatic conditions. The uh, adsorbent, be it uh, zeolite or morph activated carbon, are used in um, pelletized form and the diameter of the pellets are in the order of uh, 2 to 5 millimeters. The uh, Diameter of the adsorber is of the order of 1 to 2 meters usually, with a height of uh, 5 to 10 meters, depending on the uh, process application. The uh, superficial uh, velocity of the gas mixture in the uh, fixed bed adsorber is of the order of uh, 20 centimeters per second. The uh, translation of uh, laboratory breakthrough experiments to industrial units is a topic that I will address in a uh, future presentation, but today I restrict myself to a simplified analysis of the breakthrough experiments that are commonly reported in the uh, literature on MOFs for Theoretical background to the material I'm going to present, I refer you to my paper in um, ACS Omega published in uh, 2020. Watch also my video presentation, Screening MOFs for Mixture Separations and Transient Breakthrough Simulations on my uh, YouTube channel. These two graphs here show um, breakthrough experiments conducted uh, on a laboratory scale for separation of uh, mixtures of CO2 and C2H2 using the MOF ZNU1. These two uh, experimental data sets are from this publication from Angabanta Shami, published in uh, 2021. The uh, breakthrough data are presented in this form in which the y-axis represents the dimensionless concentration of each of, this, each of the components exiting the adsorber, normalized with respect to the concentration of that component in the feed mixture entering the tube. The x-axis in these two graphs is not the same. Here there is a parameter termed flow gas volume expressed as milliliters per gram of adsorbent in the packed tube. In this graph, the uh, dimensionless concentrations exiting the adsorber are plotted against the actual time expressed in minutes. In both cases, the uh, experiments were conducted with a mass of adsorbent in the packed tube 
of 2.14 grams. In this uh, graph here, the uh, flow rate entering the uh, tube is 1.2 milliliters per minute. And in this right hand graph, the flow rate is 5 milliliters per minute. Other papers presenting uh, breakthrough experiments report the uh, data with the time axis expressed as the time in minutes divided by the uh, mass of absorbent in the bed in grams. With, therefore, the units on the x-axis in many cases is minutes per gram. So we have three different um, choices of x-axis, minutes, minutes per gram, or milliliters per gram. I'm going to make a plea to uh, researchers presenting data on breakthroughs to uh, use consistently a parameter, a modified time parameter defined as uh, the, the actual time, say in minutes, times the flow rate of the gas mixture entering the bed in milliliters per minute divided by the uh, mass of absorbent in the bed, say typically in grams of MOF. So uh, this parameter will have the units of milliliters per gram or liters per kilogram. The advantage of using uh, this as a modified time parameter will be obvious in my uh, next slide. But uh, just to demonstrate the importance of this, use of uh, the modified time parameter, these two sets of data, when plotted in, a, in this manner, reduced to a unique curve. So two different flow rates, produce a unique curve and that is uh, uh, a good indication of the reproducibility of the data. Even if uh, different masses of adsorbents were to be used, then um, use of this parameter would uh, ensure that the breakthrough curves are uniquely uh, determined. The theory behind the use of this parameter is explained in my paper in ACS Omega, in, published in uh, 2020. Let's proceed uh, further in uh, analyzing uh, breakthrough experiments using uh, such plots of the dimensionless concentration at the exit versus a modified time parameter, Q0 times T divided by the mass of absorbent. Use of the modified time parameter Q0 times T divided by the mass of absorbent allows us to compare data on experimental breakthroughs for different MOVs published by different groups using different flow rates, mass of absorbents in the bed because the uh, comparisons using this modified time parameter allows us to uh, have a uh, good comparison of the separation potential for um, a specified mixture provided by the mixture composition from uh, the two experiments are the same and the uh, experiments are carried out at the so same uh, total pressure and temperature. Here I show experiments for separation of 199 mixtures of uh, ethine, C2H2, and ethene, C2H4. The uh, triangles are experiments for UTSA 200 and the uh, Circles are experiments for ZUL100. Comparing the uh, two breakthroughs, we see that the uh, time interval during which Q0 
purified C2H4 can be recovered is indicated by the blue arrow for UTSA 200 and the red arrow for ZUL 100. Since the red arrow is longer, we would expect ZUL 100 to yield a higher productivity of purified uh, C2H4. The industrial target is 99.996% uh, pure C2H4, corresponding to an impurity level of 40 ppm C2H2. We go move to the uh, graph on the right hand side. These are a comparison of two experiments reported by uh, two different uh, sets of authors. The uh, black squares are for NKMOF 11 and the uh, red circles are for SIP62 copper interpenetrated. The uh, interval during which purified propene can be recovered uh, indicated by the uh, Arrows here, black for NKMOF 11 and red for SIP62 copper ion. So uh, even a visual inspection was, uh, would allow us to conclude that uh, NKMOF 11 is superior in its uh, separation performance for this propine propene mixture. Let's uh, move on to uh, a more quantitative analysis of the productivities of pure ethene and pure propene in these two cases. The uh, simple expression for the productivity of uh, purified ethene or purified propane is uh, to take the uh, the difference in the uh, interval during which uh, purified alkene can be recovered the uh, time interval here is uh, the corresponds to the time at which uh, C2H2 begins to break through. Similarly, the point here represents the uh, time at which C3H4 just begins to break through. If we take this difference and call that delta of Q0 T divided by the mass of adsorbent and multiply that by the uh, molar concentration of the feed mixture at the uh, inlet to the uh, laboratory packed tube. CT is simply the uh, total pressure divided by the gas constant divided by the temperature. Then uh, this expression allows you to calculate the productivity of the purified alkene. For more uh, accurate determination of the productivity, we can um, use numerical integration of the breakthrough data, invoking the uh, Simpson's rules for determining uh, the uh, productivities. Details are available in my publications in RSC advances in 2017 and also in the ACS Omega paper in uh, 2020, how these uh, numerical integrations may be performed. So the uh, breakthrough experiments can be uh, simply analyzed to determine the productivities of purified alkene in these two cases. This uh, simple uh, approach works only if the desired product is uh, re covered during the adsorption phase of the uh, separation. For separations in which uh, 
the desired product is uh, recovered in the desorption cycle. Um, the uh, procedure is uh, more complicated and I will take that up in a uh, future presentation. But before leaving this, I'd like to point out that the uh, calculation of the productivity from uh, breakthrough experiments as uh, I've just, just described is uh, really a, uh, a simplified analysis based on the shockwave model for fixed bed absorbers. The same shockwave model allows you to determine the uh, productivity of the purified alkene in these two cases from uh, IAST calculations. And um, in these two papers, I define a parameter delta Q that I term the separation potential that I can calculate from um, IAST for a feed mixture of composition Y1 naught mole fraction of component 1 at the inlet, Y2 naught mole fraction of component 2 at the inlet. In, those, in these two cases, Y1 naught would be 0.01 and Y2 naught would be 0.99. Q1 and Q2 are the molar loadings, say expressed as moles per kilogram, of the components 1 and 2 that are calculable from the IEST for the partial pressures P1 and P2 in the bulk gas phase mixture. If the shockwave model is uh, applicable and the uh, breakthroughs are sharp, then uh, delta Q is equal to this parameter. In practice, experimental breakthroughs have a slightly distended characteristic and the productivity is determined from breakthrough experiments are always lower than the productivity values determined from the IAST. Put another way, the IAST calculations of delta Q provide an upper bound of the productivities of the purified product that is recoverable in the adsorption phase of fixed bed operations. Details are available in my publications listed here. Watch also my uh, videos on transient breakthrough simulations and screening of MOPS on my YouTube channel.